Hello and welcome to this short demonstration of using Laminate Modeler, uh, a tool that plugs into MSC Patran for uh, defining accurate materials, composite laminate materials on curved surfaces, uh, managing the plies, but also to generate um, simple flat patterns which could be used um, for manufacturing purposes at a, a small fraction of the cost of the likes of uh, FibreSim for doing the same kind of job. So I have a, a domed surface here. Um, you can see I've got um, the surface broken up into different panels, um, which I'm going to use to define the different areas of the model. Um, I'm ultimately will have a, a hole through here. Um, so this allows me to put some reinforcement around the outside of the hole. So I plot the fan back again. You can see I've meshed that. I look in materials, I've got a, a foam material defined, isotropic foam material, and then I've got a couple of 2D orthotropic materials. I've got a, a UD um, and a woven fabric here. And this is, these have the uh, engineering properties defined in them. So laminate modeler lives up in the tools menu. menu. So I'm gonna make a new layout file. Let's give it an arbitrary name. And the first thing I need to do is create my LM materials. So the first one I'm going to do is to create the UD, which uses a slide type draping. So I like that. Um, and I'm going to say the nominal thickness of that material. So the thickness of the prepeg is pre -preg is 0.4 millimeters. Let's change the name to UD. I'm then going to have the woven material which uses a scissor type draping and I'm going to use the woven material there and again 0.4 mil thickness and then lastly using the painted type I'm going to just do the foam so that has no draping at all it just assumes a uniform thickness and I'm going to say that's so four millimeters thick on the foam there. So I now have those three defined, I can go forward to defining my plies. So I have no plies to start with. Um, so in the first ply, I'm going to call it all at zero. So I'm going to use the, uh, uh, the woven fabric, so my type needs to be a scissor type there, and I'm going to pick the whole area, and then I need to define a start point. So that's, if you imagine, um, the basically, if we have to, a fabric uh, and I was bringing it up to the tool surface, that's the point I'd come into contact and smooth away from it. So I give it a reference direction to calculate my orientations from. So I'm going to use the global X direction there. Um, I'm going to say it's nominally at zero degrees from that. So if I now hit apply, it goes through very quickly and does two things. It generates an underlying blue grid that shows how the warp and weft uh, directions change as the draping happens, but it also gives me this yellow outline of the flat pattern. So what, what shape I'd have to cut the fabric out in order to drape it on there. I'm gonna make one at 45 degrees to that. So I just change the reference angle to 45. Do it again, and you can see the, the crosshairs on the um, flat pattern now are warp and weft, so that I can use that as I come back into, let's say, putting that into nesting um, software to understand how I would cut it as a roll of fabric. So those are the two plies. I'm going to have zero and forty-five um, encapsulating the whole the whole structure there. Um, I also need my foam, and that's going to be of the painted type. Um, and I actually just pick foam and across that whole area again. So that does no flat patterning because there's no draping to, to concern you with. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define the edges. And the edges are going to be in the unidirectional fabric. So that's the slide type. So I pick that. Um, and it's going to be zero degrees and the application region is going to be at 
that surface there um, with a start point here and reference of zero degrees to there I want it to be at 90 degrees to the X because it's going to run in that direction so I go apply and that's that um, I'll go for H2 which is going to be that, 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 and that. Um, and my start point is there. And the reference, same. So that's the second one. And I'm going to go for edge four, edge three rather. And my reference surfaces are that one, that one, that one, and that one. Um, and my start point is there. And my reference angle to X is actually zero. And then H4 is going to be the last one, which is these surfaces up here. So one, two, three, four. Um, my start point is there. And my direction is zero with respect to X. So that's done. That's four sets of tapes to put around the edge for a bit of reinforcement. And then my last one, I want to do the hole, and this is going to be in woven again. So I'm going to do it at 0 and 45. So my surfaces are that area in the middle. My start point is there, roughly in the middle of that. Um, the reference angle is 0. Do that and then I'll do a second one at 45. Okay, so that's defined all the plies I'm going to use in this model. So now I need to define my layout. So I come in here, and basically it's a question of choosing these in order. So if I want to have um, kind of a face skins on this, and let's say I go uh, 45, 0, 45, and I insert the foam, and then 45, 0, 45 again. Um, if I want to put the edges on, I can go round it in an order like that. Do it again so they interleave. Um, and then the last bit I need to do is some reinforcement around the hole. So I go 0, 45 again, like that. So there's my, my stack built up with all my reference angles, what the ply is called, what the material is, what the thickness is, etc. And I can say, OK. So I'm ready to create my um, finite element model here. So I can do things with, let's say, the offset definition. So I can either ignore them or I can define it. So I can say I want to take the whole model. Um, my definition point is there in the center and I can say that basically based on an offset in in that direction um, that I want that to represent the bottom surface so that's the, the bottom surface and things stack away from it so I can just create that then I can come back in here I can set the element type which is fine uh, tolerance definition, what this does is it defines how closely we group things. So obviously as these elements, as the fabric drapes across these elements, there's small differences in the orientation. And this is saying, well, if the difference is less than 5% or 5 degrees, um, then we'll treat them as, as nominally identical. We can, we can tighten that up or loosen that if we want. And then lastly, I can hit apply. And Laminate Modeler goes through and it tells me that it's going to need 13 different property sets in order to define this. And so what it's done here is it has created all my Laminate property sets and all my um, composite materials that I need in order to define my finite element model. Um, it is also capable of creating more information back within Laminate Modeler. So one of the things I can do is I can create a ply book. So if I select all my plies and I say HTML format ply book and export options, I want um, DXF files of the flat patterns in a, in a polyline format. Um, and what this will do was it will go through and it will 
basically screenshot all of the plies showing the area that it's draped on, what the ply name is, uh, general information about it, and it will also spit out the, um, the DXF files onto the hard disk drive. So if I look here, you can see I've got all my PNG files, um, I've got all my DXF files, which I can then take forward to manufacturing, and I have this ply book which goes through and it has the definition of the stacking sequence and each of these is hyperlinked so I can go to exactly which ply. Um, it's not the same kind of uh, fidelity level of information that you'd get out of something like FibreSim, but this is less than one tenth of the price to do that, um, that kind of output. So the other thing I can do is I can create solid elements. So I can use my, my layup here. Um, and I can make one single element through the thickness or uh, one element per ply. And I can say, put them in a separate group called LM solid elements. When I do that, I can then shade that up. And you can see that what's come out of it is the actual thickening from the, the stacking sequence. And I do have the ability to convert this into geometry uh, and export it back out again. So you could and conceivably use this method to create a um, starting point for tooling surfaces. We have had a customer in the past who's, who's used exactly this capability to very quickly make uh, solid representations of um, the foam core cutouts that they were using for, um, it was a rotor blade, so they were using the laminate modeler to stack the, the outer skins of it and then they were able to produce a, a volume that was the foam core that they needed um, to set into the, the mould to, to actually make their rotor blades. So that's a quick run through of how one uses Laminate Modeler to, to both define final element model, but also to get a, a, a reasonable representation of um, manufacturing information out of the system. Thank you very much.